for me, I understand my finishing abilities. And uh, I understand that if I can't get the finish quick, I'll just might get it later on in the fight. Or I might just make it, it might, it could be a dog fight. Or I could just go in there and, and pitch a master class. So either, either way, I see myself being the victor. January 15th, you're back in action. I've been waiting for you to get back in action. How are you feeling? Feel great, man. Just finished up uh, Thursday night, uh, some hard rounds right now. Um, feeling good, feeling great. Honestly, uh, I feel primed and ready to go, what, 15 days out, 16 days out. So, yeah, feel great. Court McGee, man, he's he's been in the UFC for more than 11 years. That's pretty insane statistic right there. The longevity is incredible. What's your thoughts on on Court and, and his career? Man, I have a ton of respect for that dude. You know, he's, uh, like I, I've stated in previous interviews, uh, he's a guy that when I was in high school, I saw him win the Ultimate Fighter. I think he won in 2011, if I'm not mistaken. That was my senior year of high school. Um, so to watch that and, and to now to be competing against him, you know, it, it's a great honor for me. I know what I have to do, though, uh, come January 15th, but... I think uh, thus far in his career, he's had an amazing career. You know, the guy has really fought the who's who. And um, he has a career that honestly, like, he could definitely look back on and, and be proud of. You know what I mean? Like, the dudes fought some of the biggest names in the game. You know, from Robert Whitaker to Santiago Ponzinibbio, Douglas Lima, and the list goes on. Carlos Conde. I mean, he's he's legitimately fought, like, the who's who of the sport, so... Like I said, when it comes to opposition, that's definitely not something that he's uh, he's lacking in that department. And uh, we've definitely taken that into consideration and have taken him as seriously as possible. It's it's a huge opportunity and, and it's a great test for you. But at the same time, it's something that, you know, will allow you to build your name, you know, what I mean, against this guy, because like you said, in high school, you were in high school when, when he won the Ultimate Fighter. That's that's a long time ago. Yeah, man, it, it really is. You know, um, I don't think he's old, you know, because I don't want to insult nobody because I know I'm getting a little bit older, too. I'm, I just turned 29. So, you know, I, I'm not going to call nobody old, right? Because some of my teammates that I train with, they're in their 30s, too. And if they hear me saying that, they're going to they're going to they're going to put some extra spice on those punches whenever we start uh, smart. So but, you know, um, it's definitely a thing that I respect a lot. You have to respect that. When, when when a vet like that, he's been in the game this long and he's fought the who's who, you have to. That, that commands respect right there. You know, I tip my hat to that dude. Um, but like I said, you know, when we get locked in there, um, you know, it's it's not going to be any love uh, until after the fight. Yeah, that's, that's something that I think a lot of fighters struggle with from time to time is when they face a guy that's a veteran or, or a legend or a former champion is – like you said, lock the door, that goes out the window. You and me, we're equals now. Absolutely, you know, and um, I know what I, I know that I, when I signed on that dotted line, uh, I expected the same thing for him, you know. He's, he's my adversary come January 15th. Like I said, before the fight, it's all love. After the fight, it's all love. But during that 15 minutes or less, um, you know, all of that goes out the window and, and, and we're there to legitimately take each other's heads off. So, like I said, I'm going to respect him in the battle, but 100% I'm going in there to get my job done. What do you see in his skill set, though, as a as a fighter? I see somebody who's extremely durable, a very rugged, rugged dude who has a lot of forward pressure. And, um, you know, he's in, in, in many of his fights, he's, he's always brought it. You know, I've never seen a dude not come and show up to fight. So that's a style that I really love, you know, because I feel like it, it, it always brings excitement to fans. I'm one of those guys that I like to press the action. So when somebody else starts pressing the action as well, it's going to lead the fireworks, you know. And, you know, I've been thankful enough that in, in, in uh, my career thus far, I haven't had, honestly, any boring fights, you know, even in my regional circuit, my debut, my last fight, you name it. You know, I can honestly say that that's something that I'm genuinely proud of is that I haven't had a born fight. And, you know, only thing I could do is just prepare and pray to God that it never happens to me. You know, I always, uh, not only do I want to become a champion, but I also want to be a fan favorite, you know, while I'm doing that and, and be a fighter that people really want to watch, you know, and tune in and, 
and watch. So that's something that I definitely pride myself on. From our previous interviews, if I remember correctly, you're into the the, the scary movies, the the zombie movies, and and a lot of yeah. people describe Court as a zombie. But what kind of zombie? If you could pick a movie and pick a type of zombie, what would he be? Man, you know, I would definitely. Man, I, you know what? Thankfully, you know, not one of those walking, uh, not, maybe a walking dead zombie. <laughs> but you know, I always tell people, man, like. I, if there's ever a zombie apocalypse, I pray to God it's not the train to Busan zombies <laughs> or the World War Z zombies mm. because, man, like, you're gonna, everybody's gonna have to get their cardio all the way up and through the roof to, mm. to fight those guys. So maybe a walking dead zombie, maybe, mm. but like I said, definitely, you know, he, 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 he does, he does have that style. So he's always gonna come forward. When you prepare for a guy like that, that is forward pressure, that is like a zombie, is it more on the mental side when you prepare rather than the physical? A little bit of both, to be honest, you know, and um, like I said, I've definitely brought in a lot bigger guys. Um, this whole camp, I've been training with uh, middleweights and, and light heavyweights. So a lot of these guys have been freaking huge. They've been they've been like trying to bully me around. I've been holding my own. So I've been tossing them around now towards the end of the camp. So I feel great about that. But, um, I mean, I've always had the mental aspect whenever I go into a fight. I've always had that straightforward mindset that just keep coming, keep coming, keep fighting, no matter what, make adjustments on the fly whenever I have to. Um, so I would say it's it's it would probably be about 50-50, mental and physical, because, like I said, you do have to have the cardio and, and match the output of somebody that's doing that. You see what I'm saying? And you have to make those adjustments when you fight somebody like that. Your last fight, you made quick work of Sasha Palatnikov. Beautiful performance. Um, and I think that victory is so much more meaningful than fans realize on so many different levels because what you've been through the last two years to get to that point do you feel like a huge weight was off your shoulders when when you got your hand raised in the octagon? Man, brother, you know it's uh, it's it's crazy that you're you know you're you're bringing it back. Um, honestly, like I, it really was. I swear to God, you know, like uh, it just sucked, man. The 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 two years, the injuries, the the my debut, um, my surgeries that I've had. Um, it you know I can't really describe it or put it into words what i felt it was just so much emotion and it just literally felt like uh, a big burden had been lifted off my chest it's something that i always knew i was capable of but you know sometimes fighters they get hit with unfortunate events and sometimes life happens and you know sometimes life and these unfortunate events and fighting happen my point point in case for myself um but for somebody like you to, to recognize that and point that out, you know, that's something that I have a lot of respect for and uh, a lot of admiration for because a lot of fans, you know, they, they don't really, they don't really see it. You see what I'm saying? But, but somebody like you that's been educated and has seen this understands it, right? When, when a fighter has trials, tribulations, and, and just a bunch of stuff that even in that camp, some things were going wrong, you know, but I had to just brush them to the side and, I have to handle business, you know. My mindset is always just go in there, handle business, no matter what is going on around me. And um, like I said, it was uh, it was definitely an indescribable moment, you know, and uh, a moment that I had been waiting for for a long time, and a moment that I'm looking to build off of 100%. You know, that's for me. That's that's that's. I don't mean to belittle it, but for me, it's it's just a moment that I knew was going to happen. And a moment that I knew I was going to build off of and, and gain momentum and gain steam. And like I said, January 15th, I, I anticipate to do the same exact thing and handle business and just move forward. Off of like what happened in that Max Griffin fight, I feel like a lot of people <laughs> were underestimating you. You know what I mean? And and did that ever get into your head, that noise before your last fight? No, not at all, man. You know, people still underestimate me to this day. Um, you know... I happened to catch Max at a, a at a pretty good time, right? Like uh, he he's streaking now, he's doing his thing. So I'm I'm genuinely happy for the dude. You know, do do I want to fight him in the future if the opportunity ever presents itself? A hundred percent. You know, my goal is always to avenge my losses and to to climb up that ladder and keep climbing. You know, um, 
but as far as people doubting me, my man, this is this is nothing new to me. This is I've been doubted my entire career. I've I've had critics, you know, even as close as to my distant relatives, you know. So I mean, people being critical of me is is nothing new to me. You know, since I've started this journey, I've had critics. I've had people who've supported me. I've had people who've who've given me the highest praise. I always tell people, you know. Praise and criticism, they come from the same place. They come out of a mouth, you know? So the same person who could criticize you, they could praise you or vice versa. So to me, I know what I have to do. And um, it doesn't matter what nobody says, you know? Ultimately, I know what I'm capable of. And that's it. That's, that's, that's all it is to it. Yeah, I look at it like this. If there's more people criticizing you and you're doing well, that means you are really doing well. My man, that's exactly <laughs> how I do, you know? Like, like I said, you know, do, do people still do people still criticize me heading into this Court McGee fight? A hundred percent. But it doesn't matter to me. You know, like like I said, I got a job to do January 15th. So it doesn't matter what shit. It could be seven billion people on this earth criticizing me. A January 15th, I got a job to do. And, and I know I'm fully capable of doing it. So I'm going to go out there and just just handle my business. You know, it doesn't matter what uh tom dick and harry have to say about me you know on the internet or anything like that because at the end of the day when i win then they're like oh hey you know we always knew you could do it or it, it's just noise that's all it is and i just put on my noise canceling beats and uh, i just go to work yeah. <laughs> that's all I do. yeah and when you look at court man he's only been knocked out once i don't even think he's ever been submitted he's been to the judges a gang of times how do you expect this fight to play out honestly man um I could see myself finishing him in the first, second, or third round. I could see it being a dogfight. Um, any any kind of outcome I could see, but as always, I see myself as the victor. That's just the way that I that I envision this fight. Um, I'm ready for 15 hard minutes. That doesn't matter to me. Um, at the end of that 15 minutes, I see my hand getting raised. Uh, like I said, I understand his toughness. You know, his durability. That's that's a real thing. You understand? I mean, if you have what uh 20 fights in the ufc or 19 fights in the ufc you've only been finished once that says a lot about you you know that says that you're a very durable motherfucker so that's something that i don't i don't underestimate at all and i've definitely prepared for and like i said for me i understand my finishing abilities and um uh, i understand that if i can't get the finish quick i'll just might get it later on in the fight or i might just make it it might it could be a dog fight or i could just go in there and, and pitch a master class so either either way i see myself being the victor a couple more questions before I let you go, man. Um, no, brother. MMA fandom is, is pretty insane. You know, what do you think MMA fans obsess about too much that fighters really don't give a damn about? Man, I mean, like, it's it's kind of crazy. But some MMA fans, man, it's like they're in a cult. I swear to God. I'm not even kidding you. It's like they create a cult behind the fighter. And then the worst part is... While this fighter has an aura of invincibility to them, the second that they lose, these people jump ship. And I've never understood that, you know? But, I, I mean, I don't personally think, like, I know for me, for myself, I swear to God, I don't care, like, whether a certain amount of people like me or not. It doesn't bother me. It really doesn't. It, it doesn't get underneath my skin. I laugh at it, as a matter of fact, because, like I said, as long as I go out there, I do my job. These people, they end up liking me. You know, some people, they hate me. And then with the same person that's writing me a hateful message, later on, they'll be like, hey, man, I always knew you could do it. And it's just a weird thing. Like I said, I know for me per personally, I can't speak for other fighters, but that's something that I don't give a damn about. Is that ridicule? You know, because like I said earlier, praise and criticism, they come from the same mouth. So the same dude who's criticizing me today could be the same dude praising me tomorrow. So it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't really bother me. You know, maybe like two, three years ago, I might've been affected by it. Like I would have been like, Oh fuck you, dude. You know what? You don't, you don't know what I'm this, this, this. And now I just look at it. And just, it's funny to me now. It's just like, it's, it's kind of comical, you know, but I guess that's something that MMA uh, fans do is uh, they, they create cults for certain fighters and then the second that that fighter loses or that, that fighter has a bad performance, they just jump ship. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. I'm like, dude, you guys are I don't know if you're casuals or what, but holy smokes, man. Did you guys just start watching MMA? Like, dude, it's, it's weird to me, but I guess. Yeah, it is. It is a weird thing. This whole 
Because it's not like other sports. Other sports, you got like diehards that will stay with the team, losing season after losing season. I'm still no. rocking the no. hat, the hoodie, everything. But in this sport, it's not like that. There's dudes no, man. jumping it's, around. It's not. I, I would say maybe for foreign fighters, it might be a little bit different. I know dudes from like uh, Russia, Dagestan, Chechnya. They have loyal fans. Uh, I, I, I've noticed it with even the Iranian wrestling. Like, they have some loyal-ass fans. And I'm sure, like, for me, for instance, like, I'll straight up say it. One of my – a fighter that I'm genuinely a fan of, and I've been a fan for a long time since I was in high school, is Korean Zombie. Like, I'll always watch that guy. We'll lose a draw just because he brings it, you know? He's one of those fighters that no matter what happens, that dude, he will go out on the shield if he has to. So I'll always be his fan no matter what. You know, I have a ton of respect for him, and I'll always watch him. Watch him. And I'm sure that there's other fighters, I mean, pardon, other fans in other countries that feel that same way about their fighters. But when it comes to, like, America and stuff, it's it's a little bit like the loyalty is kind of, like, iffy, iffy. You know what I mean? I, I don't know, maybe in, 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 in uh, the UK it might be that way, too. Because, you know, it's funny, like, you get a lot of fans from the UK, man. They're, they're the most colorful shit talkers ever, you know? Kind of funny. I see them I see them talking shit about uh, other fighters, and it's usually like I always see like Liverpool, or I always see like London or something like that. And I'm like, oh my god, these guys are nuts. Yeah, yeah, they're they're diehard over there in the UK. Yeah, they definitely are. Um, PTSD in combat sports, I feel like it's not talked about enough. You know what I mean? From like injuries or bad weight cuts, damage, losses. Have you experienced this or seen it in other fighters you've been around? You know. Um, crazy that you mention it. I swear, uh, we were having this conversation. Uh, I talked to my coach about it. I talked to some other teammates and I mean, man, it, it really is like, you know, it definitely, I, I mean, I guess that's exactly what you could consider PTSD, you know, cause it's, it's never easy to see certain things happen, um, to fighters, you know, and uh, like you said, certain things go on backstage that people will never know about, you know, that fighters will never release that happen or happen to their teammates, like weight cuts. I mean, bad injuries that happen in the training room or injuries sustained from fights, because sometimes fighters, they sustain injuries in fights that nobody really knows about. Um, and it's a wide variety of injuries that can happen. Um, spinal, shoulder injuries, neck injuries. I mean, even even trauma to the brain, 100 percent. And it's it's definitely something it's it's a valid point. And I do think it exists. Honestly, I do think it exists. And, um, you know, who, who knows, man, who knows what the what the future holds. Um, but it is a combat sport. Right. And in combat, you're going to see certain things that are going to affect you. You know, um, I've definitely seen my fair share of things. I've had my fair share of things happen to me. Uh, but you know, thankfully I have a, I have a great support system around me and a bunch of people who, you know, I think when many people who are around you, who are going through the same thing as you, they experience it. I think that definitely, that definitely helps your cause a lot and it, it could definitely ease your burdens. The reason why I asked you, I mean, I've been asking other fighters too, but you've overcame that. You could have had PTSD yourself from like surgeries you know what I mean? The injuries, you know, but you didn't. You went in there after that. It, it had a crazy performance. So, you know, what I mean, you're an example of overcoming it, man. It, it happens. I think it happens to just regular people. But in combat sports, it's just more, you know, common. Um, last thing. What do you think about uh, uh, Cyril Gon's team releasing sparring footage? <coughs> before that, before this fight coming up, what do you think? Because some mean, people are saying that there's a code, man, in. In, in the training room when you film? So for me personally, um, I know at Fortis, Coach Safe, he'll like kill us. He'll snap our necks. Like if he finds out that we're recording anything, like that is a big no-go at our team, at our gym. We don't even like talk about what goes on in the gym, you know? Just people on the outside, they know that it's, it's hard round. It's always hard, rigorous training. Um, strength and conditioning, coming to the gym, everything, even the mitt work, you know, it's nothing's easy. Um, for me personally, I don't fully agree with it. I could kind of understand that they're trying to create more hype and more animosity behind the fight. But 
personally, I'm one of those guys that I, I, I'm not too keen on that because there are things that happen in the training room that nobody outside of that circle should know about, you know, um, you know, it's just like weight cutting and it's just like fighting, right? Sometimes you'll see somebody at their lowest point and you're supposed to be there as their teammate. And even if, even if there's a divide that happens down the road, you're supposed to have that, that code. I look at it as a code of like, like a man code or, 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 or female code. Cause we have female fighters, a woman code, um, a code of decency, right? That you, you'll, you'll, you'll keep that secret to the grave with you for that person. And that's something that, you know, I pride myself in, uh, because I know, for instance, I've seen many of things happen in the training room that I would never speak about. And I'm sure that many people have seen me at my lowest points in the training room as well. Like you're never going to get a hundred percent perfect. Uh, you're never going to be a hundred percent perfect in the training room. And if you're beating everybody in the training room, then, Uh, you know, I don't know what that says about your training room. You're probably not training with, with great guys, you know, you need to be pushed, especially in training. So, I mean, I'm not a hundred percent keen on it. I don't agree with it. Uh, but like I said, man, to each his own for me personally, and the people that I'm around, we don't do any of that kind of stuff. We don't record. And the only time that we ever record anything is when coach safe is recording our rounds. But you know, he, he, even to this day, And no matter how much he trusts us, he's always telling us, he's like, you guys better fucking keep it to yourselves. Watch it and, and make your adjustments, but that's it. Don't ever post anything. If I find out you're posting anything, don't come back to the gym. So we just, we take his word for it. Man, incredible gym culture, man. And January 15th, man, you're back in action in Las Vegas. Ramiz, man, always, always good catching up. My man, thank you, brother. I appreciate your time.